Hi guys, um, today I want to talk about CNS, uh, how to train the CNS, how to recover uh, the CNS, um, because a lot of people have been asking me questions about CNS, like what's the CNS, uh, what difference does it make if I train my CNS, and um, what does it mean to overtrain the CNS, or to be more efficient in the CNS. CNS is the central nervous system. Basically, a lot of bodybuilders and athletes, um, this is not in the mainstream um, literature, CNS. It's becoming more popular nowadays, um, but a lot of times athletes still don't have an idea what CNS is. They, they know what it is, but they don't know what the role it plays in your training. Um, basically, very pretty very simply, I, I don't want this to be a, a super long scientific analysis kind of type video. It's going to be very straightforward and hopefully be practical. Okay, so CNS is your central nervous system. Basically, it's your brain and your spinal cord. That makes up the CNS. And, of course, the, your uh, CNS is connected to your muscles. So, of course, uh, you got to take CNS as a, factor, as a factor into your training because every time you contract the muscle, you're using your CNS to do it. So your CNS is kind of like a battery plant or like a, a power plant that controls, you know, every movement, every muscular movement, you know, in your body. Let me give you an example. A, a person who is 150 pounds, I used to be 150 pounds, and I was squatting, you know, high 300s, raw, you know, 400s, and uh, jumping 40 inches, and they're looking 500 pounds. A lot of people are like, how do you do it? How do you stay so small yet so strong? The reason is that I was focusing not on my muscles, but my nervous system. Most of my trainings before were focused uh, CNS efficiency. I was lifting very low reps and I was trying to even try to avoid mass by not doing a lot of high rep stuff. You know, because so that's why a lot of people are like, Fred, you've been training for so long. How come you didn't get big? Like, you, didn't, you look and you don't even lift. Because I wasn't training, you know, particularly for my muscles. I didn't care about aesthetics. I only cared about, you know, explosiveness. I could lift more than a guy who was 200 pounds because my nervous system is more efficient. That's it. That's, that's a simple math, simple logic. I didn't have as much muscles as the 200 pound guy. Let's just assume that 200 pound guy is pretty muscular. He's not just a fat soul, right? But my CNS is more efficient. I train my CNS to fire more efficiently. That means that every time I do a lift, whether it's a deadlift, you know, one RM or squat, or even uh, the jumping. Jumping is the best example of this, someone who's efficient in the CNS. Um, I was firing most of my muscles. I had 150 pounds of muscles, right? Like I was 156 and like 5% body fat. So like I, I had a you know good amount of muscles in my 155 pound frame. Most of it was muscles. And I was firing most of it too. I was using most of it. And the 200 pound guy, if he didn't train CNS, CNS, uh, he, he didn't activate all his muscles. Basically he had a lot of muscles that didn't get tapped into. The brain didn't call upon these muscles for contraction, right? So that's why I was, able to, I was able to lift heavier than the guy who was, uh, had muscles, more muscles than me. It was until recently, the past year, that I actually trained for hypertrophy, trained for muscles. Like, I, I wanted to be a bodybuilder now. Before, I, all I wanted to do was to be a strength athlete. I wanted to be explosive, and I wanted to be strong while staying as light as possible, which makes me run faster and jump higher, because running and jumping is all about how much muscle you, you can recruit. If you can stay as light as possible while recruiting all your muscles at the same time as fast as possible, and make, then you've got a pretty good, fast, explosive athlete, right? It's like having a really light car but a really large engine. Your CNS is just like your engine. Um, CNS is important in bodybuilding as well because bodybuilding is a CNS fatigue uh, X, uh, activity. It drains CNS. Bodybuilding. Uh, it doesn't drain the CNS as much as powerlifting. What drains the CNS the most is whatever makes your nervous system have to fire the most muscles at the shortest amount of time. If you do a one rep max, you're fucking drained afterwards. For the next week, you can't lift for shit. That's because you're, it's not because your muscles um, were fatigued. It's because your nervous system was fatigued. And that is more important because... If your nervous system gets fucked up, gets fatigued, not just that, you're not gonna make any gains. Your coordination is gonna be fucked, you're gonna be slow, you're gonna be depressed even, you're gonna be unmotivated. You know, when I was training really hardcore on the, on the uh, you know, parametrics and, and the, on the uh, one RM on the lifts, 
man, my hands were shaking afterwards for days. You know, I had really had to recover. That's why powerlifters doesn't need more time to recover. And bodybuilding is a pretty CNS intense uh, activity because especially when you do lower body. Bodybuilders, they do eight to 12 reps, even five to 10 sometimes, or, you know, and that's pretty anaerobic right there. Any kind of anaerobic exercise, let's just put it this way. People are familiar with the anaerobics and the aerobics. Aerobic exercises are not as CNS intensive as anaerobics. Walking on a treadmill, you can do that every day for two hours. People walk every day for two hours. If you can run a mile every day, you're not gonna be CNS fatigue because the slow movement, your, your, your brain, your nervous system, the battery isn't being fired like, like that, right? It doesn't, it doesn't need to fire all its signal at once to contract the muscles. That's why people can do cardio every day and they don't fear, they don't, you know, they, they can't overtrain. And, um, and that's also why if you do like really heavy shit, you can only do it like once every two weeks and stuff like that because CNS takes much longer recovery time than the muscles. And a lot of bodybuilders today, they fail to recognize the importance of CNS and they don't take that, the CNS recovery um, scheme into their training plan. So they end up overtraining. And um, I want to say is that there are, diff there, there are differences between exercise in terms of how much CNS is being fatigued. If you do an arm curl, that's not very CNS fatigue, uh, CNS intensive. Uh, but if you do a squat, even if you, don't, if you, even if you do 10 reps, right, uh, your muscles are still you know, being called upon intensively by your nervous system. That's why a leg workout is always gonna, you're always gonna feel much more fucked up, right? Not just your muscles are sore, like your whole system, your whole body is fucked, right? Powerlifters, they do like one rep maxes for their entire workout, right? And then their muscles might not be sore. They might not even grow a lot of muscles, right? But they're, seeing, they're training their CNS to fire more efficiently and which will make them stronger. See, a lot of people are like, you know, I don't need to train this because I just want to look good. But here's the thing. I think there's a place for CNS training even if you're purely aesthetic driven. Um, I mean, if you want to get aesthetic, you got to grow some muscles, right? And I read this article uh, by Kelly Baggett. You guys should go check him out if you haven't. He talked a lot about CNS um, recovery and CNS training. If, I, if my CNS is more efficient, this is also another reason why I'm able to gain muscle so fast. If my CNS is more efficient than my twin, who is a, um, who didn't train his CNS, he didn't do all the jumping, this heavy lifting before, I can get muscles faster than he can. Because every time I go to the gym, since my CNS is more efficient, I'm gonna be able to call upon more muscles at almost any given lift. You know, even the fucking arm curl, I'm more, quote unquote, more efficient. Because every time I do that arm work, every time I, I lift anything, my, more of my muscles get stimulated because more of my, more of the signals get fired. Let's see. Okay, so how do you train for the CNS? Well, basically, you want to train your muscles to fire on call. So what that means is that you have to stimulate, you have to teach. Everything is about adapting, right? Adapting, teaching your body to do certain things. You have to teach your brain to fire your muscles your, or your spinal cord to fire your muscles as efficiently as possible. And uh, you have to practice this. And the way to practice this, like the way to practice everything else, is to, be, to do it over and over again and be good at it. And um, for, in, the, in the weight room, um, I would say that anything above 85, 90%, you're pretty much, you know, getting that CNS intensive training, right? So... You know, once in a while, I know you're a bodybuilder, but once in a while, lift, uh, have a have a one or two um, programs where you do kind of like a west side barbell or powerlifting. So lifting heavy is one way to do it. And another way to do it is just um, to do plyometrics um, or lifting really fast. Lifting fast also recruits, uh, also lets your brain practice firing that signal as fast as and as efficient as um uh, as you can, right? Um, or lifting fast, um, you know, just regularly. I mean, I mean, I know there's a place for really slow contracting. A lot of people are like, Frank, why you lift so slow? I mean, why you lift so fast? Um, the reason is that I was so used to training the CNS that everything I did had to be fast. Well, I'm, I kind of changed that a little bit, um, but there's still a place for speed workout, which is, you know, 50% of your max effort, um, max 
uh, weight and then or 60 percent even and do it as fast as you can for two or three reps that's going to teach your nervous system to fire the signals quickly to contract your muscles quickly and that's going to translate to um, makes effort strength as well and it's going to translate also to your running speed and your jumping ability and another way to do it is just to do plyometrics just play basketball is a pretty good way to train cns um football too uh just don't, make sure you don't overdo it um or just no box jumps and uh simple plyometrics sprints stuff like that a lot of people can't recover from their workouts not because they're Mus muscles aren't getting because it's not because they're not getting enough proteins because their CNS is still fucking tired. If your CNS is tired, you can't do shit, right? And um, there's also ways to fire up your CNS as well, you know, like just slapping on the, your face and just get really psyched out. That's CNS. That's why I always scream and I always like jump around before the lift and do my seizure hop. That gets your CNS fired up, and when your CNS is fired up, you know, your muscles just contract really, really um, effortlessly and, and, and powerfully. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> So just psyching yourself up is a good way even to <clears throat> fire up the CNS. And um and a lot, a lot of other factors too in your life that can contribute to a CNS fatigue or CNS uh, recovery. Let's say if you like to party a lot. Partying is a very CNS intensive activity. If you don't sleep, right? One way to recover your CNS, the best way to recover your CNS is just to get enough sleep and take magnesium and get your nutrients. That's important. So a lot of people, they like to go to parties and like to drink. They're like, hey, Frank, does drinking make me uh, affect my gains? Let me tell you this. Drinking doesn't affect your gains as much as the act of partying itself, the act of not resting, right? Just fucking don't sleep for two days to try to lift weights. You can't. just can't do it. And um, if you like taking drugs, you like, you know, if you're always on high on Adderall or Coke, you know, your CNS is always pretty fucked because just, just getting high is a pretty CNS intensive activity. Um, I mean, it's a good way, you know, moderately uh, to use stimulants before your workouts, but you don't want to do that on your off days when you rest, right? <clears throat> and um, that a lot of stresses in your life can create CNS fatigue, really, like relationship stresses, stress at work. So you have to take all that into consideration. So, um, okay, you know, if you have any questions, just ask me. I'll answer more. Um, check out Callie Baggett's uh, website. He has a lot of good articles on CNS. Um, and good luck to you.